Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, I am going to talk to you guys about infrastructure as code. It's one of my favorite things in the IT industry. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to give you a summary about it. And then we're going to talk about why you should even care about it in the first place. So let's talk about infrastructure as code. But what exactly is infrastructure as code anyway? More importantly, what is the benefit and why should you even care about it? Infrastructure as code is very important and I don't think that I can ever go through all of the benefits in just one video without it being a very, very long video. When it comes to infrastructure as code, it's actually becoming the underlying framework of how the IT industry operates today. So it's not really so much an optional solution, it's kind of a requirement. In summary, infrastructure as code allows you to define the entirety of your infrastructure via code and scripts. And what that means is that you are able to define the end state of your entire environment, what you want each and every single server to become, the role that they play in your network, the service they provide to your customers, can all be written in scripts and files as code and then executed. Now, when you work in the IT industry, attention to detail is extremely important. One wrong move and you can cause a server to go down and crash. I'm not trying to scare you, that's just the reality. You have to be careful, you have to take your time, and you have to be precise as you possibly can. Now we're all human and we make mistakes. Regardless of how hard we try to be perfect, we will never ever be perfect. But when it comes to infrastructure as code, there's a lower margin of human error. And what that means is when you actually define your end state, you create your scripts, your playbooks, or whatever technology you are using to automate your infrastructure with, you are able to test it repeatedly over and over and over again to make sure that everything you have defined is created exactly the way you need it created. And your margin of error is going to go down considerably. So just think about it. If you were to manually build all of the components in your infrastructure, all it takes is one typo to cause failure. Now to be fair, when you are writing scripts or playbooks for your infrastructure as code solution, you could still introduce a typo all the same. But in that scenario, when it comes to automation of entire environments, you are going to test it repeatedly until you have it perfect. And once you have it as close to perfect as you can get it, then every time you start a new build and it's a similar build, or you use the same script in more than one environment, that script is going to operate the same in every environment that you use it in, so you don't have to worry about human error so much because once the scripts are proven and they're tested, you could keep reusing them over and over and over again. And reproducible environments is a very important aspect of that. Say, for example, you have a client and they tell you that they are having a problem. Now, what you could do is go onto their production server. You could try to diagnose the problem and fix it right on the spot. And maybe you'll do that. Maybe you will fix the problem and they'll be happy. But when you are working with a production server, you could also make the problem worse. But with infrastructure as code, you could take the scripts that you use to build the environment and you could actually reproduce the entire environment in a lab or testing environment and try to reproduce your customer's problem. And by doing that, you are able to narrow it down to the root cause without affecting the production work environment. Similarly, if you want to introduce an improvement in your production servers, you could actually use your scripts to create lab servers that are set up similarly to your actual production servers. You could test your changes there. And once you have it down to a science, you could graduate those changes to the production environment, and then everyone can benefit from your idea. And another thing that I like a lot about infrastructure as code is it enables you to manage thousands of servers at once. Just think about it. If you have thousands of Linode servers at your disposal, would you rather A, 
Introduce a change manually to each of the thousand servers one by one? I don't think you'd want to do that. It would take you a very, very, very long time. But with infrastructure as code, you can implement the change just one time, and then all of your servers are going to check in, and they're going to implement that change. That's a lot easier. And another aspect is iterative development of infrastructure. You can develop a proven system for change control. You can define in your organization how changes are implemented. For example, perhaps you have your version control scripts in a Git repository. You could create a separate branch for the change that you want to make. You can have that change reviewed by your peers. They might offer suggestions and improvements. And then you can implement their solutions and suggestions. And then together, you all agree on the solution. You could test it and then graduate it. So you could basically create the workflow where a change starts as an idea and then becomes a feature later on down the road. And you can utilize industry standard tools for provisioning servers, networks, and more. Tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, and so on. There's all kinds of different tools and configuration management solutions at your disposal that you can choose from. And you can choose the individual solutions for each component in your design that's the best fit for your organization. And you can also encourage collaboration in your team by lowering the barrier of entry. You can have your entry-level users actually contribute to documentation and use the same system, the same repositories for that purpose. You can have your more advanced administrators contribute system-level changes to the code. And you can create a system that anyone is able to access, view, and hack on, and that's going to increase the collaboration at your organization and with your peers. And infrastructure as code is self-documenting. Now, that doesn't mean that you no longer have to write documentation because you will still need to do that. However, if your infrastructure as code solution is written well, then anyone that looks at it will have a general idea about what you are trying to achieve and what your code actually does. And the biggest benefit of all is with infrastructure as code, you will spend less time manually building things and more time being creative. And when you allow your coworkers and employees to be more creative, then you will watch your entire organization change before your very eyes. Think about it like this. If you have a coworker who has an awesome idea that'll totally transform your business, and that individual is spending all of their work hours every single day manually building things, then unfortunately, they don't even have time to let you know about it. But if you are able to automate at least part of the process that they work through for building infrastructure, then that person will have more time to think through the idea that they might have, formulate it, and pitch it to the team. And once that starts to happen, and one person is creative, and then another person is freed up, and they're being creative, then job satisfaction is also improved because when you are able to leverage your creativity at work, you have less stress because you have to spend less time manually building things. Infrastructure as code is something that can transform your entire organization. Now, you don't have to think of it in terms of your organization at this point because Maybe you're getting started with a concept of infrastructure as code, in which case you could check out the videos on this channel that'll teach you how to get started with things like Ansible. And that's a great way to get started. Actually, Ansible is a very popular configuration management solution that I highly recommend you check out. But there's many others out there like Terraform and so on. And even if you are a one man or one woman force at your organization for building environments, if you have to spend less time manually building things, then you're just going to have an overall better time at your job, and you're going to be able to simplify your workloads, your builds. It's just an overall win, regardless if you're just one person or a huge organization. So, I hope this content has gotten you excited about infrastructure as code it's an awesome subject and it's a lot of fun. 
But it doesn't stop here. This is only the beginning because we have some infrastructure as code specific content coming very soon that'll actually show you how to utilize it on the Linode platform. And I am actually preparing some of those videos myself right now, and I'm really excited about it, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. So stay tuned to this YouTube channel because as soon as the content is out, if you have subscribed, you will be the first to be notified as soon as it's available. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.